Hallo, konnichiwa, äh, guten Tag, äh, dear ihr lovers, äh, Unagi äh, all LiebhaberInnen, ähm, welcome to this episode of this uh, show that's still called the Compendium of Discomfort, I am still called Michael, and we are back to talk about these two ladies, the baby assassins. This picture is very representative of today's episode. Like we're talking about baby assassins every day. Of course, we're one day late because yesterday I came home. I was too tired. I didn't even think of talking about uh, this. So, yeah, welcome one day late, but I guess that won't make much of a difference. Um, anyway, this is basically the first episode of the second half, the second story arc. Um, and yeah, it starts very, very different from everything else that we have seen, um, because so far it was uh, more focused on their work. Uh, pretty much, and seemingly after this, uh, it gets a uh, big uh, work focus as well. They will start a new job thingy, it seems. Um, but now, um, like they said in the last episode, they went to visit Chisato's uh, family, and this family uh, is played by some very nice actors. Uh, her brother is played by Yugo Mikawa, who we saw recently in uh, the wonderful movie Cloud, and maybe in the other wonderful movie Mondays a little bit before, and uh, even earlier in a movie called Under Your Bed, which was very good as well. A very memorable face, uh, you might have seen him. Then we have uh, Jun Hashimoto as the father, you might know him from Shin Godzilla, even though he doesn't have the most important role there, if I remember correctly. But he's a very um, memorable face in uh, Kingdom. And he was in the lovely Let's Go uh, Karaoke, or Let's Go to the Karaoke, it seems. And, and he was in the cool uh, movie series uh, Library Wars. Uh, light novel adaptation i think i think there's an anime as well but i really liked the movies um i don't know the rest uh, but i uh, got there while i was uh, in search for more junichi okada action stuff and it's a uh, good good solid fun and then as the mother we have hiroko nakajima who was for example in a small slow but steady what uh, some very old uh, Takashi Mika classics like I Catch Junction and Young Sucks. Um, so you might have seen her if you're into that kind of stuff. I know some people are very much into that kind of stuff. Uh, hello, boys. Um, I hope you end up watching this video at some point. I guess you will wait until you you're able to watch the show, actually. So maybe a little bit later, but I hope you will end up here. Anyway, so uh, you dear people are watching it now and uh, we want to talk a little bit about this um, episode. So it's very much in the countryside. They visit Chisato's family and basically there's no big action, no big drama, just uh, beauty and love and feeling good for the most part. So that's very refreshing. It's a real, like everyday episode see we go home to visit the family episode and it's um quite interesting the director uh, was here uh, wataru hiranami who directed um episode two which was a little bit similar that was the episode where they were in this um izakaya working and uh, it was very lovely as well no, just that had some killing at the end this one Spoiler, spoiler, doesn't. Um, but uh, I think there was some, some similarities. So maybe that's his tonality. Even though he wrote a blog post where he was like, okay, he needs to do something very different in this episode. And he has directed one more. That's episode 10. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing that and to see whether or not this is again a little bit more different from the rest. But yeah, he, he seemingly got some episodes that are a little bit out of the ordinary here and uh, does the job 
very well. The only thing that made me personally a little bit sad because they are feeding my pet peeve again. Um, she wrote in this blog post that is full of praise for everything the show does, how much uh, it captures the spirit of the young generation now and uh, how much it um, discusses uh, topics in society. I would guess especially probably like economical things and how young people recently feel. At least these are the elements that come through here in this episode. Um, there's a little bit discussion about being stingy with a Schauessen. Schauessen! Don't be stingy with Schauessen. Ne? Kein Schauessen, guides. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty insane and funny and uh, wonderful. We will get to that a little bit later. And um, yeah, this throughout the episode is always this feeling like they visit Chisato's family. And Mahiro mentions that her family is very different. There's not much talking going on and there's not real like happiness to be found. And then here she has this phrase that she says over and over again, this jika aru aru. So that's like, oh, this is something that happens in your uh, home, yeah, in your family's home. Like she realizes, hey, these are all very normal things that make people very normally on a very ordinary level happy. And uh, she basically missed out on these and needs to go to this different family's home to uh, get a little bit of this. So that's the big emotional point in this episode and how this plays out at the end is really, really wonderful and great. But uh, back to my pet peeve. Um, in this blog post, he wrote a lot about how much like the set designer and the lighting person and all these people um, tried hard to make everything look nice and they prepared some food that you can smell and taste and yeah and how all this effort plays out at the end is that it looks like every other tv show every commercial every movie everything that's somehow video that's not this video because i just do it by accident when i turn on that light and i show you a blue picture that you have orange and blue and this is so oh, I, I, I hate it i, I can't understand Seriously, I can't understand it. It's something that has been driving me crazy for years now. I can't understand how someone who is creative works hard to make a movie set that looks nice and then basically just turns everything blue and orange, puts on some annoyingly dimmed light that no sh normal human would have, but just because it's dimmed and a little bit orangey, it turns everything orange and the faces of the humans become orange. And uh, then they wear some blue clothes and it just looks like garbage. And I don't know how any human with a little bit artistic sense can look at that and feel like, oh yeah, that's really cool. I mean, that would be cool if that's like, one movie or one show that does it as a stylistic idea but it's every movie it's every tv show it's every uh, commercial it's everything it's every youtube video like there's nothing almost nothing that doesn't try to do this it's one of the points where people are like oh with color grading you can make your stuff look more cin cinematic and it just doesn't work if it looks like everything else. And here in his blog post, he was, oh yeah, this show is, um, from its production style and uh, what they do, better than other shows in the same time slot, and they achieve much more. And it's probably true, I don't watch that many Japanese TV shows, but, I mean, it's a tremendous show, I love it, it's probably my favorite show of the year, even though recently Golden Kamui started, and I haven't watched it yet, and it seems to be amazing, because the movie is already amazing, and it continues the movie, and I will watch it very soon, and talk about it here soon, probably I will not do one video per episode, let's see, um, but yeah, we will eventually talk about that as well. And I love as a new Kamen Rider so far. But this might be my favorite TV show of the year. But I still don't get why people would choose these visual things that 
if they feel like, hey, we're achieving something absolutely unique and amazing here, why do you have to make it look like everything else? Why can't you have any artistic integrity? And uh, ugh, it's something that completely gets me out of what I'm watching. I really need to focus on what I see and I need to focus on what I see is really good and it's wonderful and I think this episode is absolutely tremendous and great but it needs it requires effort from from me to ignore these things and I don't like it I just don't like it if you're okay with it many people probably don't even notice it but uh, I just don't like it it's it's, it's disgusting I really don't know why, why this is happening and why nobody ever talks, but no critic ever mentions, hey, this looks boring. Just looks boring. They have no ideas how to visualize the things that they want to do. They have no idea for a color scheme. How is it possible that filmmakers don't have any idea what color scheme they want to use and just go with blue and orange because that's what everybody does? I don't get it. Why aren't people more annoyed about it? You don't need to be as angry and passionate like I am, but uh, just be like, why? This movie, if people would just be, hey, this movie would be better if they had some real colors. If everybody would say that, they would change it eventually because they don't want people to be annoyed. Because if they're annoyed, they don't watch their stuff. So I, I feel like people are oh, oh old man yells at cloud. Um, no, it's just a thing that people could say, hey, we don't like this, we don't want this, and then it will stop eventually. But people don't care, and uh, if you don't care how your movies and TV shows look, I don't know if you really like movies or TV shows. I don't know. Maybe you just need something in the background. That's fine. If you enjoy that, that's good. But uh, I have here some some love and passion and I want to see things that maybe have some pink or some I don't know here this, this looks good or I just just do black and white if you don't care about your colors do black and white it always looks better than blue and orange anyway let's get back to this wonderful episode even though it's not very beautiful to look at um they go to the family, they have some food. The big action scene here is Mahiro trying to avoid being shot by a water gun and it's a lot of fun because the little child is like, and she's doing flips and stuff and it's, it's wonderful and lovely and cute. And um, the whole family interaction is great. So there's a scene where the mother tells her friends that her daughter wants to be a professional girl. Like, oh, you're joking. No, no, I'm totally serious. And like, oh my God, she's completely crazy. And I like this weird reality where being a professional killer is seemingly kind of a relatively normal job. I mean, that's the way it's handled in Kunioka. And Kunioka is the fake inspiration for this uh, series. So I guess uh, it makes sense. But but I, I like this idea but yeah, it's it's something people do. It's maybe nothing super common, but it's a job that exists. Yeah, and it's pretty fun. And of course, but say, yeah, but you're not doing anything dangerous. And now is here the uh, uh, era of AI, and maybe you can use drones or something like that. Um, and say, yeah, yeah, we, we don't do anything dangerous. And you get some uh, flashback scenes from the first two movies and stuff and it's a uh, hilarious and wonderful and this is a really really lovely episode and uh, yeah then we have the big uh, show essen escalation where uh, Shisa's father wants to make some omelets and she's supposed to cut some sausages and this brand is called show essen I, I i don't know if it's a, a little bit more expensive or something anyway she wants to use like two sausages and cuts them and she's like oh yeah if you do it right that's uh, totally enough and the father gets so angry like don't be stingy with the show essen yeah and uh, it's amazing it just especially for me i don't know uh, how you feel but for me the word show essen um is one of the words that people throw at me randomly whenever i say that i'm german they're like oh show essen yeah so for me that's that's something very weird because we, we never say show essen yeah, like um, 
sounds to me like like food that you present yeah uh i don't know we never say that it's a very a very weird word and just a brand of sausages i mean of course sausages are german yes i need a german name so just make one up that's uh funny so yeah when when they get in this fight about this uh show essence it's just just so funny for me at least and um yeah he's like oh i didn't raise you to be stingy with show essence and uh yeah that's a little bit a uh, generational gap and a little comment on uh yeah probably the economical situation you even have to be stingy with your sausages oh my god uh, if that happens in germany probably the world is going to end um anyway that's all, all wonderful and the big conclusion of this episode is uh, when both of them get back home to their apartment and they're sitting there and uh, Mahito uh, chops a uh, watermelon to death and they share it and they discuss um, happiness and um, Mahito brings up this difference where she doesn't really have this type of happiness at home but Chisato could always go just back and uh, enjoy that and um, yeah so she's a little bit depressed like hey I, I can't have this what's going on um, and in the end, the big conclusion is that uh, she's like, oh, yeah, I don't really distinguish between the happiness at home or here, like going to the kombini, getting some delicious food. And uh, yeah, in the end, she's like, yeah, for me, happiness is being with you here and eating and stuff. And it's just so cute. It's mostly just filmed straight in their faces. Just like imagine there's one more me here and uh, we're eating watermelons and um, uh, talking to each other like hey this is the most uh, wonderful thing that happened to me uh, forever i would be very terrified if there was one more of me because one is enough and uh, i wouldn't be able to handle one more i don't know about you but i i don't need that but yeah no so it's uh, just a uh, wonderful wonderful scene this whole episode is just there for this big culmination in this moment and how mahiro completely emotionally breaks and uh it's it's glorious and beautiful and uh, yeah it's uh, very worth watching and sets up the new story arc um yeah, they will start some new jobs. The new uh, villain will show up here, Tokyo Emoto, um, who looks uh, hilarious. She seems to be a, a, seems to have a confrontation with Mahiro, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see how that plays out. And uh, yeah, more about that I guess next week when I'm hopefully not one day late so you can't hear my glorious opinion on the colors uh, blue and orange and um, i hope that rant wasn't too much to handle i will get to that a lot probably because uh, it comes in waves some sometimes i'm more annoyed sometimes i'm less annoyed but i have one more movie review coming up that's another movie that i liked very much and i disliked uh, very much in some points and uh, the visual design is a part of that so we will at least have to talk about that in this movie but yeah basically so sometimes i'm i'm less sensitive sometimes more and i guess uh, today is a more sensitive day so um yeah forgive me for that and come back soon to uh, hopefully get more uh, love and inspiration and uh, joy about a japanese uh, cinema but everything I've, I've planned to talk about soon is i think pretty tremendous like even this one movie i, I can tell you what it is super happy forever um there was praised uh like oh that's one of the greatest movies of the year so i went in there was very very high expectations and what i got was um, one of the movies of the year but still very uh, good with some more problematic things but we will get to that uh, soon i already recorded a video about that one here uh, the uh, newcomer journalist uh, toroko um but i haven't um 
edited yet, but I guess that it will just appear shortly after this. So, um, yeah, and in between I went to a Bocci the Rock um, exhibition. I guess we will talk about Bocci the Rock um, soon as well. Um, it doesn't focus. Focus. I, I always need to hide my face to focus on other things, but uh, yeah, we will talk about Bocce the Rock. I brought it up um, recently um, when I talked about this show, like Mahiro's behavior was pretty much like a Bocce. And um, I saw a picture of Yugu Sakamoto um, doing a talk event at the cinema here next to my um, apartment, basically. And I couldn't go there because first I already had other plans and they announced it very shortly before it happened and when I noticed it was already completely sold out anyway. So I couldn't go there, but I saw some pictures and he had a, a Bocce the Rock t-shirt and uh, maybe he's a man of a good taste and that's uh, something that I appreciate. But uh, to get back to my pet peeve one more time, it's very interesting that this trend of blue and orange seemingly didn't get to animation because at, at least I haven't seen anything that's so obsessed with blue and orange uh, in, in anime and I would hope that more people get inspiration from that side because that looks much nicer much uh, more interesting so uh, yeah but anyway we'll talk about Bocce the Rock soon as well and uh, let's see what else I, I, I promise here uh, Shadow of Fire for a million times I still haven't recorded anything um, I'm very busy recently I uh, told my manager my shifts were too short I need more money so he gave me like huge humongous shifts and that's good because I need money to uh, go to the cinema and watch movies that I can uh, tell you about and uh, yeah, that's why we're here. So thank you very much. A lot of rambling at the end, but I guess that's sometimes needed as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and uh, see you soon uh, next time whenever I will talk to you again and you're willing to listen to my rambling. Thank you so much and uh, have a nice day. Bye.